Are you an architect and want to increase your value for your organization and for your career? There are five things you as an architect should never do. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Ali Usman. I'm a technologist, strategist, and an architect myself. I have been an architect in different roles as a solution architect, as an enterprise architect. In this video, I'm going to talk about those five things that you as an architect needs to be really careful about. On the top of the list is ivory tower architecture. Now this term is not unknown if you are an architect or it has actually worked with one. Ivory tower architecture means that an architect comes up with an architecture that he thinks would be a best fit for the organization and for the stakeholders without actually consulting them. This is a major problem and very dangerous, not just for you as an architect, but for your organization too. So all this engage your stakeholders, your technical teams, your SMEs, and get their feedback. Do not do the ivory tower architecture. Do not do architecture in the isolation. Number two, architecture for the sake of doing it. Now, this is something that I have seen some architects get confused into. They love creating diagrams. They love creating views and models. The problem starts where you lose the big picture as to why you are doing it. So always keep that in mind that you are trying to solve a problem or visualize something that can help solve that problem. Keep doing diagramming and modeling and creating views and all that, but do not get lost into that. And all this have a bigger picture and the end value into your head. Number three, analysis paralysis. Don't get caught up in analysis paralysis. Now, I get it. As an architect, you want to be thorough. You want to do a good job. You want to provide all the information for your stakeholders. The problem starts where you get caught up into that analysis and you overspend doing it. And that is the major problem for so many, for your stakeholders, for your executive management. They start losing the interest in architecture because they don't see the value coming right back out. And they're thinking that you are just wasting their time by doing analysis that may not matter. Remember, the window of opportunity is relatively small. Actually, it's very small these days. So always make sure that you do enough sufficient architecture and move on. Number four, making decisions that do not fall into your lane. Now, as an architect, I see we love making decisions. We love to make decisions on the solution architecture, what components we want to use as a part of our solution. On enterprise architecture, we want to look at the standards and want to set that standard for the organization. I get it. And those are the decisions that are well served if made by architects. I'm talking about decisions that do not fall into our, into our lane. Those are the decisions that can impact some stakeholders or to business. If that's the case, let those folks make that decision. And you can provide your analysis back to those business folks or your executive management and let them make the decision. But do not make those decisions yourself because if you make those decisions, it's going to cause a lot of confusion in the organization and people would start losing interest in you as an architect and would think that you are trying to do their job. So stay away from that. Number five, don't do waterfall architecture in an agile world. Now, if you are not living under the rock, you must have heard about agile and how much companies are excited about adopting agile models. They are really excited about providing value back to the stakeholders as soon as possible. So that creates a challenge for you as an architect and your stakeholders, because if you spend too much time in doing architecture and do it in a waterfall manner, they are going to start losing interest in you and your artifacts. So be creative there and think about how can you provide value immediately to your stakeholders by doing it in an iterative and an increment way. So those are the five things that I discussed. And um, as an architect myself and someone who actually has seen the architects in a various different roles from the application solution to enterprise architecture, these are the common things that I've seen architects do over and over, and they cause a major problem for the architects and for the stakeholders. So make sure you don't repeat those mistakes. 
Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was useful information. Please let me know if you have any comment or question or if there are some additional topics that you want me to cover on this channel. Have a great day.